Ready? Yeah. Hi, I'm Sandra Umbleton, and for those of you who are following me and those of you who watch my videos, you'll, you already know that um, big souls and big spirits make themselves known to me at the time they're meant to come forward and be recognized as one of the soul spirits that carry the peace of, of Christ inside of them. And so there's a, a, I don't know how to explain it other than there's a time for everyone to come forward. And this particular time uh, for the soul to make itself known to me uh, is the soul of Mary Magdalene's mother. And how this came about, um, it happened a, about a, a month and a half ago. I was guided to uh, go up to a meditation um, up to Caledon, uh, where this particular lady uh, lived. Uh, her name is Sue Chapman. And uh, Sue is a very gifted woman. She's very talented and gifted, gifted, intuitive, and and um, de definitely a, a spirit that is led by God. And so others come up to her place in Caledon to have meditations and to meet with her. And I'd known about her for quite a while, and yet the first time I heard about her it was from someone else who had a a negative uh, feedback for me on her. So that kind of, I took that seed and let it grow in me actually, if you want to know the truth. And uh, and said, oh, maybe she's not one of my 500, maybe I should let that go. So as time went on and time went on, since I was told that it's been two years, so all of a sudden I'm getting more reports. Well, no, you gotta go see this woman, you gotta go see this woman. I'm going, well, maybe I got that report so I wouldn't rush up there because maybe it wasn't her time to sign. I wasn't sure, but the point was, my friends were going up there and said, Sand, you got to come, you got to come. So then Spirit says to me, okay, it's it's time for you to meet this woman. I go, okay. And God says, take the book with you. And I said, okay. So off we go up to Caledon to meet this woman. So we drive up north and uh, we get there and we were, there was four of us. And uh, we get there, we're, up, we're going up north and we arrive and it's a beautiful place in the country. And and actually backing onto a river, so and the river is beautiful. It was just I couldn't help imagine sitting there meditating, hearing that water go by, and how beautiful this environment was. So we walk inside, and we go into this lady's living room, Sue's living room, and there's a number of people gathered, and um, uh, we uh, we we walk in, and then Sue just says, "Oh my God, the uh, can you feel that?" And I what like, well, the energy's changed. Can you, my gosh, it's the energy of change. She said, there's magic in the room now. There's magic. And I went, well, that's really cool, right? So I'm thinking, well, where do I sit? So I ended up sitting right beside her. So she was here and I was here. And the rest of the people in a circle around us. And uh, I sat down beside her and it was it was still a bit cool, eh? Because it was March. So um, the fire, fire's going and everything like that. Or actually, it was early April. First week in April, I think. Second. And the fire was going and everything, so I'm nice and cozy, and I'm sitting beside her. And we started the meeting, and so she started uh, talking, and there was another lady who had some information she shared, and um, there was um, other people that were talking and interacting. But for me, Spirit was saying, don't say anything, don't say anything. And I'm going, all right, all right, just listen. So as she was talking, I'm going, man, if she were, if she were wise, like she really had truth, truth, truth. And one of the biggest truths she shared with us was she said that often when someone is feeling unworthy, what happens is it comes across as arrogance. In other words, when you as a soul spirit are feeling unworthy of any honor, often you can put on the coat of arrogance where, oh, but that's silly, I, I, I don't agree with that, or that's ridiculous, or I'm above that, or that's not what God would want. This is silly, people. Uh, reincarnating and carrying a piece of Christ. Well, that's ridiculous. So that's how the arrogance comes across. It's a dismissal of the truth when it's presented to you. But in, if you layer it down and go underneath, it's actually about feeling unworthy. And when she spoke, I knew she was directing it towards a particular woman in the room. It was general knowledge for all of us, but I could feel and I knew why spirit was was giving this information because there's a woman in the room um, who is incredibly um, religious. She's incredibly religious. And um, because um, she's incredibly religious, she her husband's a pastor, I believe her son's a pastor, 
and uh, very, very much loves God. But at heart, she's a teacher. Like, she's a teacher as well. And so I have presented this book to her on several occasions, and both times she's rejected signing it. So when Sue gave the message about that, I'm thinking, hmm, what's going on? So all of a sudden, doesn't this woman start ha uh, uh, handing out flyers? Um, and she's handing out flyers, and she brings a flyer about Isaiah. And this is a poem or a chapter, or, you know, taken out of the Bible, and she's circling around the room. And then she, she sat down and she, I believe, wanted to uh, talk about it or express herself about it, but the conversation never got back to the handout. Instead, the conversation moved on, and, it, and, and someone was there to represent the knowledge book, and so this was a, a book that uh, seemed to be gain, gaining popularity right now, and so that topic came up, and as more topics are coming up, you know, I'm just, I'm still sitting there, I'm not, Spirit's saying, don't speak, don't speak, and I'm going, okay, okay, but there was so much truth being spoken, it was like you're breathing in the energy, like you're, like that because there's so much going on and spirit was heavy in the room, just incredible. And so then Sue starts to um, have a conversation about when she uh, brought this, this home and just was guided to this property and how she's somebody who all her life has been attracted to the Magdalene, to the Magdalene. And there's a lot of people that are attracted to the Magdalene energy, right? And so I'm going, wow, is that ever interesting? And she said, she said, uh, she was telling everybody how, yeah, she said uh, all her life, she just felt this attachment, this, this connection to Mary Magdalene. And I'm thinking, well, that's really cool. And then she said, in fact, when I moved here, she said, I got a statue of Mary Magdalene. And she said, I remember I carried it and I placed it over in this corner of the property. And she said, and it didn't fit. And she said, and then after a while, the statue said, no, I'm, I don't want to sit here because she, she can intuit that. And she moved it over to the other side of the property. And she had shared with us earlier in the conversation that even when she bought the property, she moved on the property, that the Magdalene appeared in the woods across the river. So not only when she moved there did the Magdalene make an appearance, so she physically, like she saw her spirit in the woods, standing there, introducing herself. And then the next thing you know, here she's got the statue and she's trying to place it on her. Uh, property, so she's carrying the statue from here to here and here, and finally the statue, the presence and the energy of the statue say to her, no, no, I want to be inside. And so she's saying, so I brought it inside. So she, so I've got a clear view sitting there of where she put it. So I'm looking at this beautiful statue of Mary Magdalene, and I'm listening to this woman tell us how she was carrying it from place to place, trying to find a place for it. Well, all of a sudden, spirit, like my heart's just beating. And all of a sudden I said, okay, I have to speak now. I have to speak because Spirit's so heavy on me. I have to, I have to say what's going on here. And um, all of a sudden, you know, I just, I just acknowledged everyone's presence in the room and how amazing everybody was in the room. And all of a sudden it dawns on me that every single soul spirit presence in the room was one of my 500. There was one lady there I didn't know she was, but she is. And the other lady who is but won't acknowledge it. And here's Sue, and now I'm getting, oh yeah, she's supposed to be um, uh, signing my book. And then the fellow from the Knowledge Book, and my two friends, Mary and Teresa, they've all signed the book. So now all of a sudden I'm realizing there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven angels in the room. Eight, including me, right? So that's a lot of angels in one place. So all of a sudden that, it dawns on me, that's why spirit's so strong, because we're all carrying a piece of Christ, everyone in the room. And then all of a sudden I, I turned to Sue and I said to her, Sue, I said, you're Mary Magdalene's mother. Mary Magdalene needed a mother too. And you're Mary Magdalene's mother. And all of a sudden the energy went, whoa. And she just went, oh my God. And the next thing I knew, the energy was just like <sighs> pouring into the room and I couldn't speak and she couldn't speak. And we're sitting there, and, and it was almost like there was so much energy, and I kept going, ground it, ground it, put it in the, put it in the ground, put it in the ground, because, because, you know, trying to get the energy anchored, because it was so powerful. And I, I started crying, she started crying, and people in the room, I don't think they knew what to do, because we're sitting there like, oh my God, this is so, this is such a, such a true thing 
that, that was said, that the spirit and angels came through so strong and God's presence came through so strong because this was actually a truth and this was what was happening. And so all of a sudden she says to me, okay, I have to tell you something. And usually spirit will validate something very quickly if it's a true thing. You'll find the validation follows very, very fast. And all of a sudden she says to me, I have to tell a story. And I said, what is that? And she said, when my daughter was very young, my young son and my young daughter and my husband and I went to a museum or a church or something. And in the church or the museum they were visiting, there was a picture on the wall, a fresco in a niche. And it was a picture of Mary Magdalene as a little girl and her mother standing behind her. And my son comes up to me and says, Mommy, Mommy, look. That little girl in the picture looks just like um, Nina. You're like my sister, which is which is Sue's daughter. So Sue's daughter is looking exactly like the Mary Magdalene as a little girl. And she looks at it and all of a sudden she goes, oh yeah, right, like I'm, I'm the mother of Mary Magdalene. Hmm. She had a premonition, she had a vision earlier. And when I told her, that was the first thing that came to her mind because Spirit's bringing it to her mind and her conscious awareness because that's exactly who she is. So it was a very, very powerful day. It was beyond, beyond powerful. And then the next thing I know, Spirit's also validating to me that this other woman who's sitting there, whose husband was the minister and son, the one who passed the flyer out, is actually the Spirit of Isaiah. And her, her response was, well, which one? There's three of them. And uh, I said, you'll know which one it is. And then she says, well, the one Isaiah was actually died by being pulled apart. And then, and nobody ever took Isaiah seriously as a prophet. They kind of laughed at him and nobody really took him seriously in his life. And I said, that's why this lifetime you spent, you know, the majority of your life learning, um, studying, um, and, uh, and becoming acquainted, so acquainted with the Bible that nobody could ever call you stupid again, that no one ever could disgrace you or say you don't know what you're talking about. And I said, so you're a learned person and your spirits come back and carrying that fear because you don't want to be mistaken this lifetime for someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. And so I don't know how much she heard, but her, her journey this lifetime is to understand that when spirit speaks and comes to you, you say yes. You say yes, and and maybe she just can't accept because she feels unworthy. How truly, truly amazing she is, and how truly amazing her light is. So um, hopefully we'll work with that together with her because I love her. She's an amazing being, and uh, it was just an absolutely amazing day because I uh, met uh, Mary Magdalene's mother. So I wanted to share that with you. And I encourage all you great spirits who are watching this to contact me and come forward. And uh, we'll see, uh, see what's there, see who you are. Thank you.